CBS 2 HD, news as it happens. The crowded beach at Coney Island, a picture taken by the legendary photographer Ouija in 1941. Of course, people are always looking for a brand new spot for a summer getaway, which is precisely why we sent Michelle Miller to one of the oldest. Say the name Coney Island, and what comes to mind? Hot dogs? Amusement parks? Roller coasters? They're all Coney Island originals, and just a few of the reasons this stretch of beach outside New York Harbor has become the stuff of legend. Once the on-screen play place of silent star Fatty Arbuckle, it was lovingly parodied as the hometown of Woody Allen's alter ego in Annie Hall. I swear, I was brought up underneath the roller coaster in the Coney Island section of Brooklyn. Maybe that accounts for my personality, which is a little nervous, I think. The reality is that through all of its ups and downs, the excitement here has always revolved around one thing. Coney Island meant summertime. Well, and the thing about Coney Island was, there was always a possibility of things happening. There was this wonderful sense that anything could happen in this place. We asked architectural historian Barry Lewis to take us for a stroll back to Coney Island's early days. It was the first of mass amusement uh, entertainment parks. When we think of Disney, when we think Disney invented the idea of mass entertainment, we're wrong. Indeed, it was 1884 when the world's first roller coaster tore across the dunes of Coney Island. Soon after, the island was filled with competing amusement parks, the first parks of their kind. At night, they were a showplace for the wonder of electric light, captured here on film by none other than Mr. Lightbulb himself, Thomas Edison. But it was in the daytime when visitors could experience something truly electric. When you came to a Coney Island park, you were involved in it. You were thrown around. You had the rug pulled out from under you, literally. You had the sidewalk separating. You were thrown around revolving barrels. It was wonderful. Sounds, you would, sounds oh, dangerous. Well, that's why they don't exist today. <laughs> if, if they existed today, they'd be sued left and right. It was gritty. It was grimy. It was unrefined and unruly. And the public loved it. Each hour on the hour, spectators could marvel at recreations of towering infernos. Yes, they set buildings on fire just for fun. And out on the beaches, there was yet another smoldering attraction. We may laugh at those 1890s bathing costumes, but think about it. People only knew each other in everyday life through three or four layers of very stiff clothing. And on the beach, they were wearing these, these wool jersey bathing suits. Well, we think it covered everything, but for them, it was practically nudity. Oh, risque. Oh. <laughs> Zowie, it's Coney Island caviar. To satisfy other appetites, miles and miles of German sausages were married to custom-baked buns and Voila, another Coney Island invention, the hot dog. As the years went on, the rides got bigger, the sideshows got stranger, and the beaches got more crowded. By the 1930s, a million or more would come to Coney Island on a summer's day. Yet the good times and the crowds wouldn't last forever. In the 1960s, as the middle class fled the city for the suburbs, Coney Island was left behind. But the tide may turn again for this stretch of beachfront property. Today, developers are floating proposals for a sort of Vegas by the sea. That may appeal to some, but historian Barry Lewis says, without a little of the old rough and tumble spirit, it wouldn't be summer. And it certainly wouldn't be Coney Island. I'm of the school that says, give me a little grit. Give me something that's, that, that feels like sandpaper. <laughs> Don't we need something like Coney Island in our lives? I hate to see that loss. 